Okay, class, today we're in 7.3 extension. Define and use fractional exponents. Go use fractional exponents. Key vocabulary, cube root. You have learned to write the square root of a number using a radical sign. You can also write a square root of a number using exponents. Now, what you see, see here below, I don't want you to read this because all it's going to do is confuse you. You'll probably get a better understanding of it as I explain it through the examples. Okay, now the first thing you need to understand here in example one, where it says evaluate expressions involving square roots, is this. The square root of 16 is how you're used to writing this. But the square root of 16 can be written as 16 to the 1 half. In other words, the square root symbol means one half. So when you see the square root of 16, what you're really saying is 16 to the one half power. So 16 to the one half power can be written as the square root of 16. The square root of 16 is 4. Okay, now here in B, we have 25 to the negative one half power, which can be rewritten as 1 over 25 to the positive 1 half power. The same rules that we use when we're working with integers. So once again, 1 over 25 to the 1 half power. Well, 25 to the 1 half power means the square root of 25. So we actually have 1 over the square root of 25. Now, what is the square root of 5? 5. So what's our final answer? 1 over 5. Now, if you look at C, it's starting to get just a little bit trickier, although not by much. Here we have 9 to the 5 over 2, or 9 to the 5 over 2 halves. I can rewrite that as 9 to the 1 half power times 5. 9 to the 1 half power times 5. Now, why can't I do that? Because 5 over 2 really equals 1 over 2 times 5. 1 over 2 times 5. 1 times 5 is 5. 2 times 1, that's what's up under that 5, is 2. So once again, 1 half, that's that, times 5, that's that. And that's equal to 5 over 2. Now why did I do that? I did that so I can write this as 9 to the 1 half power raised to the 5th power. 9 to the 1 half power times 5. Now 9 to the 1 half can be rewritten as the square root of 9. So now I have the square root of 9 to the 5th power. What is the square root of 9? 3. So now I have 3 to the 5th power. So 3 to the 5th power is equal to 243. Okay, now for D, I'm going to use the same trick that we use for C. I got 4 to the negative 3 over 2 powers. I can rewrite that as 4 to the 1 half times negative 3. Now, why can't I do that? Because 1 over 2 times a negative 3 is equal to a negative 3 over 2. 1 times a negative 3 is a negative 3. 2 times 1 is 2. So once again, 1 half, that's the 1 half, times, that's the times, the negative 3. So once again, 4 to the 1 half times a negative 3 is just going to rewrite it once, one, right here again without the dot, but meaning the same thing. So I got 4 to the 1 half to the negative 3. 4 to the 1 half can be rewritten as the square root of 4 to the negative 3. What's the square root of 4? 2. Then I bring down my negative 3. Now what's 2 to the negative third power? I can rewrite that as 1 over 2 to the positive third power. So now 1 over 2 to the positive third power becomes 1 over 8. 2 times 2 times 2 would give me 8. Okay, so now we're going to discuss cube roots. If b to the third power equals a, then b is the cube root of a. For example, 2 to the third power is equal to 8. 2 times 2 times 2 will give you 8. So 2 is the cube root 
of 8. Once again, 2 is the cube root of 8. The cube root of A can be written as the cube root of A, and you see, see I got the square root symbol, and the 3 is in there, that means cube root. Or you can write it as A to the 1 -third power. A to the 1 -third power. Example 2, evaluate expressions involving cube roots. A, 27 to the 1 -third power. That's equal to the cube root of 27. Now 27 can be rewritten as 3 to the third power. 3 to the third power. All right, so now the cube root of 3 to the third power is 3. Or you can go directly and say the cube root of 27, what number that when you multiply it by itself three times would give me 27? And that number will be 3. So 3 times 3 is 9 times 3 is 27. All right, let's take a look at B. 8 to the negative one-third. 8 raised to the negative one-third. Well, first I'm going to make that negative one-third positive by rewriting it as 1 over 8 to the one-third. I now know that one-third means cube root. So that's equal to 1 over the cube root of 8. Notice once again my 3 on the inside. What number is it that when I multiply it against itself three times it would give me 8? It's going to be 2. So 8 to the 1 -third power ends up equaling 1 over 2 or 1 half. All right, now for C, we're going to use the same trick that we used back in example 1. I got 64 raised to the 4 -third power. I can rewrite that as 64 to the 1 over 3 or 1 -third power times 4, which means I can rewrite that as 64 to the 1 -third power raised to the 4th. 64 to the 1 -third power can be rewritten as the cube root of 64 raised to the 4th power. The cube root of 64 is 4. 4 times 4 is 16 times 4 is 64. So now I have 4 raised to the 4th power. And what's 4 raised to the 4th power? 256. Okay, now we're in D. Now D is the same trick that we used before, except they're going to make us start off with a negative. So now I got 125 raised to the negative 2 over 3. Then that's going to equal to 125 raised to the 1 third times a negative 2. 1 third times a negative 2. That means I have 125 to the 1 third power raised to the negative 2. Same thing, just took away that multiplication sign. All right, now 125 to the 1 third power can be rewritten as the cube root of 125, and then that's raised to a negative 2. All right, now what's the cube root of 125? 5. 5 times 5 is 25, times 5 is 125. And I still get that negative 2 right there. That's that negative 2 right there. I can rewrite that as a positive. So that becomes 1 over 5 squared. And then what is 5 squared? 25. So what's my final answer? 1 over 25. All right, now for those of us who may have been lost on that trick back in example 1, remember now 4 over, four over 3 really means 1 third times 4. 1 third times 4. 1 times 4 is 4. 3 times 1, that's the number that's something in there, is 3. So once again, 1 third, and then there's your 4 right there. And over here, we got a negative 2 thirds, right? So that's like 1 third times a negative 2. So 1 times a negative 2 is a negative 2. 3 times 1, there's a 1 right there, is equal to 3. So once again, there's my 1 third, and there's my negative 2. Properties of exponents. The properties of exponents for integer exponents also apply to fractional exponents. Example 3. Use properties of exponents. So here in A, we have 12 raised to the negative 1 half power plus, excuse me, times 12 
raised to the 5 over 2. When we follow the same rules when the basis and when we multiply, when the bases are the same, we add. So I get a negative 1 over 2 plus 5 over 2. Now, of course, if I'm, if I'm not good with fractions, I'm in trouble right now. But anyway, a negative 1 over 2 plus 5 over 2. That ends up being 4 over 2. 5 minus 1 is 4. And I end up dividing by 2. So 4 divided by 2 is 2. So 12 to the second power is equal to 144. All right, so now don't forget, over here, you're going to add your fractions. 5 over 2 minus 1 over 2. And that equals 4 over 2. That's where that came from. All right, now on this side, we have 6 raised to the 4 thirds times 6 to the 1 power. So we're going to add once again. So now I got 4 thirds plus 1. Oh, and don't forget, we're also dividing that by one-third. All right, so now I have four-thirds plus one. That's going to give me seven-thirds divided by six and one-third. So here, since we're dividing, we're going to end up subtracting. So six raised to the seven-third minus one-third. All right, seven-thirds minus one-thirds will end up being two because seven minus one is six. And then 6 divided by 3 is 2. And what is 6 to the second power? 36. Okay, now how do we get that 7 thirds? 4 thirds plus 1. 4 over 3 plus 1. That's equal to 1 and 4 over 3. Now convert this mixed number to an improper fraction. 3 times 1 is 3 plus 4 is 7. 7 over 3. All right, now how do we end up with 2? We simply said 7 over 3 minus 1 over 3. And that gave us 6 over 3, which is equal to 2. Okay, class, that's it for today. Uh, like I said, we had to rush through it pretty quick. But yeah, I got to try to get these things recorded in less than like 15 minutes so it's not easy to try to squeeze everything in so that's why sometimes I, I talk real fast and start trying to get everything in for you okay you may start today's lesson um what's that one through 13 uh, we can do all of those okay thank you